to grab it here. So anyway, now I've done the basic cleanup operations. And um, the battery area is not in that good shape. There's actually some residual. I tried to clean it as best I could. The usual tricks, but um, you know, I'm not super optimistic. And uh, there's no history of, of whether this actually works or not. It was just provided as untested. So um, we'll see what happens, if anything, when I hit the power. But it's only the motherboard now. It's totally being cleaned. Um, I've checked through the nothing obviously directly wrong. So, so let's um, throw the switch and see. Super hot. So, anyway, step one. Let's try and change something and see what happens. I'm going to add the disk drive. So, when I plugged in the disk drive, and then we hit the power again. It's not pulling the disk drive, so there's something wrong. As I said, I wasn't super optimistic this would actually work because of the state around this battery. Ah, maybe not that, but it, it was not in very good shape. So let's see what we can do next. So anyway, let's set up a little bit more of a yeah, <laughs> debugging area. Um, took out the scope, um, got a multimeter, I read a bit online. So um, it says that it's a uh, chip memory failure, uh, that um, the color we get. And on um, the chip memory, it's basically it's this area here. So these are all the RAM chips. Now, if it's able to show that um, color, and it and it seemingly restarts all the time and does the same sequence, and based on what I've been doing, then um, the processor should be working. The ROM should be working. Um, to access memory, you need um, what was that called? Those. You need Gary to be working, and you need Fat Agnes to be working. Uh, lots of the comments about that chip memory are uh, excluding issues where they found that actually you need to change out RAM and stuff. Is that um, there's a connection problem with the Fat Agnes? So I actually removed it and reseeded it, or removed it. You used Contact Cleaner and reseeded it, but that that didn't make any difference. And here's the special tool to use to take out those chips so do not try and do it without this tool it's uh, you're, you're liable to either break the actual um, socket or, or you're gonna take a piece out of the chip so I heavily recommend you buy buy one of those they're zero dollars don't really cost much anyway um since um we have this corrosion problem. I'm still somewhat into the line that we have some trace somewhere is bust. So uh, I think we're, uh, I, I'm going to go through some basic diagnostic procedures. Um, I don't know, maybe this end up being a hopeless case. I have to throw the board. But um, 
I can at least, uh, for educational purposes, show some some basic. And um, you can download the, uh, if you search for Omega 500 Plus service manual, it's actually very easy to find as a PDF file uh, from quite a few different locations. So I actually um, spent a bit of time offline um, printing out the um, schematics. Um, and then there's the uh, component layout for the board, also. Right, we'll see. Um, and the first thing I thought we would check is... is um, let's see... Oh, that's the RAM. RAM chips. So I thought that since it's a chip problem, a RAM chip problem, I thought we would actually concentrate on this area here first. And the first thing I would want to check is the, is the RAM getting um, its supply voltage. So that's um, it's actually the pins, the supply pins are given here and at the bottom of the diagram. And then that's... Okay, that's interesting. This is a 20-pin uh, um, chip, and the okay plus is on 10, and ground is on 20. <laughs> Not really following TTL logic. So volts. Uh, let's see. Yes. Remember that ground is 20. All the weird things on here. 20. Oh, wait, let's put it on, of course. I can't get any voltage. Not well organized here, for showing. Let's see if I can. A bit better for filming, so that's that. And I would actually like to be able to see a bit better. So let's see. Uh, so no, I can actually. So else. No, 20 is minus. It's ground. Oh, I never get that. 4.92 volts. Yeah, well, good enough. Oh, it's hot today. I drink a lot of water. Okay, so we know that it has voltage on those rounds. I actually did spy and look at the the traces. So okay, on the on the Power, power source. So I'm um, just going to try not to blind the camera. And then the next thing I thought we would check is to see what types of uh, what, what signal quality we're getting on the on the RAM chips. And um, so what I'm doing now is I have. I have two scope leads connected and actually the second one is just to ground to override the ground reference and then I'm measuring with this without the ground lead. <laughs> of course you can argue that it's not very precise that way but we, we, the only thing we want to see is is there a signal and does it look like a TTL signal so uh, let's see I think we start with address lines so that will be and we're not going to go through all the I just want to have a jump so, uh, 6, 7, 8 on the first two chips. So, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 6, okay, that looks good. Um, 7, okay, a bit wobbly, but that's probably the grounding. Uh, Ah, 
I would say there's some kind of a TTL signal on those. And then now these are static RAM, so no refresh logic. So you're going to have a ah, you're going to have the same. You're going to have column select and row select signal. So that was so that's column select is 17. This is a, a computer from 1988 with one. This has one megabyte of RAM, so uh, give it time because the, it's amazingly slow compared to <laughs> modern CPU equipment. So, so, like you saw, I had to wait. When this is cycling, I think it's doing a memory test to get this result. I, I think it's actually trying to populate the memory. And then read it back. So write to memory and then read it back. Okay, then we need uh, row select. Uh, well, this, this printout's not that great. Four. So let's see if we get anything on four. Okay, looks like the one, two, three, four, okay. So it seems to be okay. And then there's right enable, which is pin three. So we'll see it's at, if it's actually trying to write to the RAM. See what happens when it cycles? I would expect this to change. That's actually a bit strange that we're not getting... I would expect that it's trying to write to the memory. Whoa, I think something went. I missed it. Let's take another, another chip because this could be a, a higher up on the address range. So let's take... Let's take the same three on that one. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah. So th this is the high end of the memory, probably, and this is the low end of the memory. That's why it's not happening. So I should have actually probably taken these two chips, because these are two separate uh, memory banks. Okay. Ah, oh, wait. Yes, exactly. Then we've checked. So we checked address, row select, column select, write enable, and now it's just to look at the. Um, the data lines, so that's uh, one and two on each chip. So let's have a look at that. Let's see what that looks like. One, whoops. Okay, mm, that's what the. Well, that doesn't look too great. And then what about two? So anyway, I took a break and had a look at the schematics. And um, uh, ah, without going into too many details, what happens is that the data line it ends up with a latch and a buffer, and the, the buffer is just like going from the RAM out, and then the latch is going in towards the RAM. And, um, so, I think we'll have a look at that. I mean, they could be, either the buffers or the latches could be malfunctioning. 
But then I also looked that they're being controlled from from Gary, and Gary is there, and the corrosion is here. So, so um, I don't know. I think I'm going to check the control signals for the buffers and latches first. So let's. Let's look at the buffer, those are the two four fours. So that's one. Let's see what kind of a signal we get there. Oh, running out of space. So what are the two four? So these are the those ones. So let's see if I can see what happens. Up oh, there, that's looking good. So these are not hot either. Let's see if I look at the other side, not the RAM side, but the other side. Signal, data signal, so that would be like three. I think it says three. Where was that on? Trying to understand how they mark this. Doesn't make any sense. Pin three. Said this scanning and printout is not super good. Okay, so that'll be 17. That's the other side. So let's have a look. No, wait a second, I'm doing it. Oh, there's one. Ten. Seventeen. Okay, so that's valid. So on one side, on the RAM side, it's do uh, dodo odd signal, and then on the other side of the buffer, it's a valid signal. And we know that the control signal for the buffer seems to be. What about the latch then? It has two signals going to it. One and a left. So that's these chips then. That's one. Uh, okay. So where does 
Is it coming out of Gary then? So one goes to through a resistor and ends up in Gary on number three. Oh, let's see if I can have to try not to blind the can. on a different level. Let's see what happens when it cycles. Well, there doesn't seem to be much life on that. Oh, there it was! Now oh, you see, you have to be so patient. You know, you give up, ah, there's no signal. It's like, <laughs> just wait. Wait a bit longer then it kind of cycles through. But it, uh, this voltage level, that's not the same. So this pin here, okay, it does go through a resistor. So that's number three. And that seems to be, that's okay, five volts. And then it goes through some resistor. That could be like some kind of a <coughs> CMOS to TTL adapter resistor, wasn't it? It's R112. Um, so if I measure both sides of the resistor. Okay, where is that resistor? Okay, I will have to um, look at the board layout and see where, where it is. Should be. Oh, how do one read these? Uh, um, the page away. Do that for immediately. Forgot where. Just looking off the room. In that group. Actually, see it. And then it's 112. Okay, then they're from under. That looks like 112. So if I take one side, because it's close to the Gary, I'm assuming that this is the Gary pin. Just like to see that dip. I'm going to take the other side of the resistor. See what's there. Oh, what? Five volts? With a thing. It's nice they put that resistor there because this this end of the resistor should go directly to to the latch. Pin one. It's not five volts. Okay, what to do next? But since it should be a direct connection from the end of the resistor to the pin, I'm gonna I'm going to measure, but I'm gonna switch the power. Off. So power off. Now of course I am kind of biased because um <laughs> of all this grow. This was actually much like you saw when we, uh, if you watched the disassemble video, this was actually much dirtier. And so I am a bit biased towards thinking corrosion, I mean, predominantly thinking corrosion problem. So, of course, that's driving the diagnostics is, is to find what, 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 what trace or something is blown up. Oh, where was that? Must be there. And then. Oh, no, definitely not connected. Okay, so where does that go? Down here. Hmm. What? Okay, I'll trace it back. Oh, hard 
start to see. does go through the corroded area so uh, okay if it's a if it's the trace that's corroded and it's broken then I have to create a short circuit but I don't want to do a permanent one because it turns out to be not the problem then okay I'm gonna have to find um, something to bridge the gap because I'm going to um, take it from the other end of the resistor and put it onto pin 1 and see what happens so I raided my um, logic analyzer so it has these grippers and then I took one of these prototyping cable uh, wires of course, this is not something that one could. <laughs> it's very good for a digital signal, but I, 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 if this turns out to be the problem, then um, I will just solder in a wire. So power goes off. So okay, so I'll take. Oh, uh, what was it? 112, that's that one. And then number one. Uh, help. And that should not be short. So these are very small, these grippers. So. Should we turn the power on? Or not? Double check the connection here. the markings because it was so corroded here and when I cleaned it then I, I damaged the markings a bit but I tried to look at the board layout and should be the correct and then we've measured it so should well try to at least okay now of course the thing is it could have other traces that are bust so but we can see if the um, if the symptoms change Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, white. Oh, that's not so good. Hey! Okay. Uh, a little bit of a wow. That I, this is the boot screen. So, of course, now I don't have a have the disk drive installed or anything. Okay. So um, ah, let's um let's check the RAM again. But I I okay I don't I expect it to be working. But let's um it was the data signals that we that were not good. That's one and two. We take those again. Let's see. Just as a paranoid check. So uh, one. The grounding is crap, so that's why it's looking so weird. But I mean, and this is digital signals. Just fast. If one had better grounding, it would be um, more logical. And plus there is a latch and a buffer working, so you have to understand that based on the enable signals, <laughs> part of that gibberish is not even being used, because it's going through, it's transitioning between the different, like writing to the RAM and reading from the RAM. So if you really wanted to clean up that display in terms of pure detail, then you need a logic analyzer. 
But um, hey, Heka, wow. We have somewhat working Omega 500 plus. So of course there could be some other traces wrong. I have not got. I am going to put in a new battery, and then we'll see if the battery logic, uh, the real time clock, will actually stay work. But um, that's pretty interesting. We have a a working um, working system so far. Okay, so I, I suggest we. Uh, I'm. I'm going. Or actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm offline. I'm going to actually put a wire. Uh, I think I measured that it was actually working between that point and the pin. So I think I'm going to take a wire from the through the through hole to the uh, resistor. So not, not not try and solder to the pin, that's a bad idea. You could create thermal damage on the actual circuit here. So it, it, it would be better if I put it into the board and then put it there. I, I actually have such um, such thin wire that is meant for jumping, making temporary fixes. So I, I, will, I will get that in place and then we will um, continue what we originally started with, which was to um, test if this actually works. So that's the disk drive, keyboard, sound, uh, yeah, picture, of course we have already. So. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So, anyway, I thought I'd show this fix. Anyway, and in addition to that, I, in the meantime, the battery has arrived. So I've been debating with myself, should I have a battery there at all? So. I think I suppose I should have it. So, to fix these things I usually like to use this wire up wire because it's very thin but still flexible and then it um, has this special tool to actually take the insulation off. And then uh, I actually intend to have a um, go from that point to the resistor. So let's take those away. So in preparation. Move that away so I'll burn it. this part. Uh. Oh. So. Color should be used. Let's take the last part. Keep it away. Now, of course, one could run it under the battery because the battery has these kind of openings in it. So. 
Insulation off. Just cut those a bit short. Make it a bit too short. Oh, oh that sucks. I made it a bit too short. Oh, come on, I just had it there. Hands are just shaking too bad. Oh, why did I make the wire so short? To redo that. So cool. I should actually work with a solder tip that's not so big.
better. Of course I'm probably gonna fail with connecting it up to the next time. Let's see if I could could loop it around instead. Oh I wish my hands would just stay more stable. I'd like to have it on top of the resistor. That might be a bit better. Yeah. Something like that. That would actually be perfect. Because then it's a bit off the top. Off the circuit boards. There's no risk of it. So look at that, see if that's any good. I'm just gonna examine it. Oops. I don't think that's that bad. It goes from the top on top of the resistor so that it's not touching the circuit board and then it comes all the way over here and then it just disappears into there. So I think that should be okay. And then we're going to Conductivity would be from that resistor to number one. Yep, it has now conductivity. So now for the battery situation, and it has actually there's not th three three holes in use. It's only um, it's only the, that one and that one. And that one there. So I'm thinking I'm going to put some flocked solder in there and then I'm going to get my uh, pump um, soldering station and I'm going to try and clean out the holes as best I can. I looked everywhere and it's behind my water glass. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can open that up. And, um, or, of course, hopeful that there won't be any short circuits. Okay, the legs aren't 
Very, well, it wasn't a very good package. Oh, it's delivered like that. It's not that bad. There could be a charge in this, so let's don't try and avoid. Really would like to before I turn it around. if I'm going to be able to put this on the camera because I have to try and now I have to reposition the wire that I put in also. so I will fiddle that into place so I'm going to see if I can just fasten it in the corner here It's really close to, to that other trace. But anyway, now I think it's... Yeah, so now I can turn the board around. And it seems to be on straight enough. And the little wire goes underneath in between. The Now I can actually I mean most of the time was I was actually spent trying to um Get the pump to work. I think I've got enough solder on that. There's no short circuits. Might need to cut these leads a bit. So they or are they administratively longer than anything else? Oh yeah. So I think I'm actually going to Now one has to remember that that's a battery, so it might have some voltage on it. So it's a very bad idea to short circuit that area right now. Or wherever it's feeding power to. So I'm going to have to lift it up. And cut those very carefully. You can't see it when you're looking at it from here, but if you look at the side angle view, then you can see that it's, if topologically it's um, uh, higher, those pins are higher than where everything else is. So, battery in place. Um, not if it works. No, I don't even know if the charging circuit works or. The circuit that uses the power from the battery works, so we're gonna have to do some testing with the real time clock to see see that it actually works, and then we actually have to see if this even starts um, with this fix now in place. So anyway, um, yeah, permanent jumper wire put in place, battery installed. So now we're gonna see if it starts or something else happens. Okay, I need to worry about the battery. 
it's, if there's some corrosion or something aiding to the or short circuited <laughs> certain components then then this might go up in smoke or worst case scenario explode no i don't know if it will explode because it's actually made of individual small cells so anyway very good so the um jumper wire seems to be working so um let's move on with what we originally intended to do which was to try the disk drive so i will um just get it installed so now i put the disk drive in place and there uh, just gonna see if it actually does anything made some sounds yep click I don't know if you can hear it on the camera but it's searching for the um, workbench disk so then it will go click 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 if it's actually connected logically work oh, this cable is not really sure how it wants to bend it so not sure it was right originally when we had it Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a, see if I can use um, Workbench 1.3, which of course is not for this one because it, you need the 2.0 um, revision, but um, then I will have to go make some disks or be an interlude we can place just see if it reads a disk that will be the main thing yeah see now it's not accepting it probably because it has to be a 2.0 disk so now we know that backwards compatible workbench disks but the good thing is that it turned and it tried to read the um, read the disk and now it's waiting for a new disk so that's good so i will um go and fix the disk so anyway well, i swapped out to this one now this is technically speaking on omega 2000 disk drive but ah, it shouldn't matter really um, except that it's out of its case so now it's not very stable No. Hmm. So now I got two disk drives. Not liking the two point. The two point zero ROMs should be able to load. Workbench 2.1. So either it's a problem on the motherboard. Oh, this is not that easy to handle because it's. No, wait. Needs to be supported because it's out of its case. It's not it's jamming the motor. So, research continues. I have to try to figure this out. So, anyway, a few days has gone by because I decided to replace this um, drive that doesn't seem to be working very well with a um, ah, new production um, 
this is not an original Amiga drive, it's a, a mo uh, I found a seller who, who um, takes PC, or I understand he takes a PC drive and then he modifies it so that it's um, Amiga compatible. So we're going to actually give that a chance. Well, let's see how that works. Because this one was too unstable and I, I'm not really equipped to fix floppy disk drives. And especially if it's... Uh, it's not completely dead. So I would think that it might be a head alignment issue or maybe a head needs to be changed, but I, uh, not my... not usually what I work on. See that first time I'm testing it. Okay, so at least we hear clicks, and it actually searched for track zero. Let me get this here, so standard 3.1 workbench, Let's see what happens. A little bit of a warning, I actually did have a load problem. I've been using this disk a bit too much, so, so let's not panic if it gives one read error. It's, it's not the drive, it's, it's the disk. I've been testing other Amiga configurations with it. In disk drives that are <laughs> even worse condition than this. But it seems to be loading okay. Mouse works. again. It's always good to do multiple memory tests. When you start it up, just to see if it works. And um, had the sound connected so we can actually audio. Yep, still works. Nothing got broken there. Anything else? Ah, yeah, controller port. I mean, we know that the mouse works, but let's just click through. The middle mouse we don't have, and then the movement works fine. And this is the other port. Ah, that'll probably work. They, they usually get very little use. Ah, real time clock. So it's actually found it. So where are we now? Oh. October. Oh wait. Cycle through all the days, you can't go back. So, October the 1st. <coughs> and then the year is 2020. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. 
See, if you don't get this this unified area, then you have some memory problem. That's a real quick test if you have no video memory issues. So, system reset. because we're going to see if we still have a date and time well, it looks like the disk drive seems to be working fine, the new disk drive so as I said I'm retiring this one Sunday, the 1st of October 2023, yeah, 11 past 8 in the evening. Yeah. So we have a good battery backed up real time clock. Seems to work because if this battery wasn't connected in the circuitry, it's intended. But the, of course, the only long term test one, and one would have to do is the one would have to put it in the cupboard for a month and wait for the battery to run to empty itself completely if, if it wasn't being recha recharged so that will be shown over a longer time than if, it, um, if it's not actually getting charged if one was really interested one could measure the voltage over the battery to see um, if it actually goes up to levels that one consider it would be charging but anyway that's um, good so I the now we need to um, validate the um, keyboard. So I will actually have to go get it. So, found the keyboard. And now it's plugged in. And let's apply the power. Power light. And, and we will Again, load the workbench, which is also good testing for the disk drive. Let's see that it's consistent. As I said, the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll forgive it a bit because this disk has been mistreated a bit. So, it's, but uh, I must say that it seems to be loading it okay. So maybe I haven't destroyed it as bad as I think I have. But it uh, it has had to deal with some disk drives there. Yeah. They're, they're even more junk than the one that was on this one. So, so I'm concluding that the disk drive purchase was successful. I got it by from the same same source the next time I need drives. So the main thing I'm interested in, do we have a membrane that's okay? Because that's the thing that's expensive. find dead keys. So I'll just click through this and come back. Okay, bringing you on board for the last keys. I must say this is by far my best experience for and then we got 500 keyboard. This is actually better than the uh, refurbished Omega 500 Classic I have, uh, with, in which I changed the, um, I, I bought a new membrane for it. And I must say that this, from a uh, touch sensitivity perspective, this keyboard is, is I would say, by, by far better than that. But then, of course, the Omega 500 Plus is um, a newer, a newer computer. So they, they might have done some minor design changes in how the keyboard sensitivity stuff 
But as you see, it's green, so that's what we want to see. We don't want to see any stuck keys. We don't want to see, um, you know, one doesn't need, so that one doesn't have to bang at each key. I must say, each of these keys reacted just immediately. So, hey, that's cool. So, uh, we know we have a picture. Um, we know we have sound. We know the disk drive works. We know we, the memory were out. The system seems... Uh, and we have a working keyboard, mouse works. Of course, we don't know if the external um, disk drive or the serial port or the parallel port works, but uh, what I'm going to be using this for, it's if, if I do down the road happen to use those ports and they don't work, it's not really... Ah, it's not, not a big deal. Um, I can fix that. So, for, from the perspective of calling the this a, this a day, I, I, I think... I think it's done. So anyway, um, there's going to be one more part uh, related to this. Well, there will be several, but uh, in in the main, uh, like restoration series, there will, I will um, make a video showing how how we put this whole thing back together again. So if you're interested, um, consider jo joining. Hit the um, bell icon so you don't miss the next video and. And you subscribe, that's always great. Nice to have more people in the community. And, um, yeah, I'm happy. Worked out fine. See you in the next one.